Chapter 17 The Charge In Part 1, we covered how to learn all the sections of Chapter 17 through trick word. Let's just quickly revise it. A form of charges 211 says the content of the charges 212 says regarding the particulars as to time place and person of a person 213 says the manner of committing an offense second comes with the sense and 215 says what are the effects of the errors 216 says that court may alter the charge and 17 says to recall of witnesses when charge is altered today we're gonna cover section 211 that is the contents of charge now let's cover it in detail form of charges section 211 section 211 speaks about Contents of charge. It has seven parts and four illustrations. Let me tell you, don't miss illustrations. These are those examples from which a question can come in judicial examination. Before checking the section 211, let's cover the definition of the word charge. It is given under section 2D of CRPC 1973. Basically, it's not explaining the word charge, but elaborating that charge includes any heads of charge when the charge contains more heads than one, it simply means any number of charge will also be called as charge. See, the very purpose of Section 211 is to inform the accused under which he has been charged for what offense he has to visit the court, prepare his defense, basically to make him understand that what mistake has been done by him under the law of land. Subsection 1 of section 211 says, every charge under this code shall state the offense with which the accused is charged. So the very first thing it is saying that we have to name the offense under which the accused has been charged. Subsection 2 of section 211 says, if the law which creates the offense give it any specific name, the offense may be described in the charge by that name only. If the law specify the offense by a name, that name has to be described. This is what it says. Subsection 3 of Section 211. It says if the law which creates the offense does not give any specific name, so much of the definition of the offense must be stated as to give the accused notice of the matter with which he is charged. Now, Subsection 3 says if the law does not define the name of the offense which the person has created then what we can do we can define the offense that he has committed next is subsection 4 of section 211 it says the law and the section of the law against which the accused is said to have been committed shall be mentioned in the charge so subsection 4 is informing us if the law has defined it we need to mention that law as well for example, if a person has committed an offense which comes under Domestic Violence Act, we have to mention that he has committed an offense which comes under Domestic Violence Act. If we have to ask a person that he has to give the maintenance, then we will mention the law that he has to give the maintenance under the Maintenance Act. Or if he has committed some crime, then obviously under the Criminal Procedure Code, the punishment defined under IPC has to be mentioned. Subsection 5 of Section 211, it says the fact that the charge is made is equivalent to a statement that every legal condition required by law to constitute the offense charged was fulfilled in the particular case. Now let's remove the complication of this subclause 5. Let me correct myself, it is subclause 5 rather than subsection 5. So the subclause 5 says for better understanding the nature of the crime committed by the person. The words of the charge has to be done in such a manner that it should include the fact that legal condition has been fulfilled. This is what it says. So that the person does not take the advantage of the fact that he could not understand what crime he had committed. If the contents of charge are not proper, the accused person can inform the court that he cannot prepare his defense and he might get acquitted just for this mistake. So it is a very important part. Subclause 6 of section 211, it says the charge shall be written in the language of the court. Now this specifies that the charge is always in a written form. It cannot be oral form. Now we come to subclause 7 of 211, it says if the accused 
having been previously convicted of any offence, is liable by reason of such previous conviction to enhanced punishment. Now, till here we understand that the punishment can be enhanced if the accused person has already committed a crime in his past. Further, it says, or to punishment of a different kind means the conviction can be enhanced even if the person has committed another or different kind of a crime. The clause 7 says further, for a subsequent offence means every offence committed thereafter. And it is intended to prove such previous conviction for the purpose of effecting the punishment which the court may think fit to award for the subsequent offence. The fact, date and place of previous conviction shall be stated in the charge. So till here we understand that we have to just mention the date and place of his previous conviction in the charge and the court will automatically enhance his punishment because the charge shows he is a habitual offender. Now the clause 7 further says and if such statement has been omitted, the court may add it at any time before sentence is passed. So for whatever any reason, maybe because while framing the charges, we were not knowing that he has committed offence in his past as well. The court can add that to the charge at any time and that should be before the passing of sentence. It is very obvious if the sentence has been passed then there is no reason to add it. Now let's take up an important case. B. N. Shri Kanthia vs. State of Mysore, AIR 1958, Supreme Court 672. It was held that the provisions relating to the charge are aimed at giving full notice to the accused about the offence of which he is charged. It gives the accused accurate and precise information about the accusation made against him so charge is a very important part when we proceed a case in a court. Now there was another important case which we can see. State versus Arjit Kumar Saha. This was 1988 Criminal Law Journal NOC 2 Calcutta CAL. It was held that the material on record did not show the prima facie case but the charges were framed by the magistrate. Since there was no application of mind by the magistrate, the order framing charges was set aside by the High Court. So the magistrate has to apply his mind. This is very important part. Let's take another important case. Bohor Singh vs. State of Punjab, AIR 1974 Supreme Court 1256. In this case, the charges were framed under Section 148 and Section 302 read with Section 149 of IPC. But the accused were convicted under Section 302 read with Section 34 of IPC. It was held that since no prejudice was caused to the accused because of wrong framing of the charges, therefore the trial were held not to be violated in absence of charge under Section 34. Now let's cover illustrations. These are the important part of Section B because in judicial examinations, such illustrations are covered as question and answer. The first illustration is that A is charged with the murder of B. Now for a layman, it's a simple thing that A is charged with the murder of B. But for a law student, they must understand. This is equivalent to a statement that A's act fell within the definition of murder given under section 299 and 300 of IPC. Second thing that it did not fall within any of the general exceptions of the code and that it did not fall within any of the five exceptions of section 300 or that it did not fall within exception 1, one or other of three proviso to that exception applied to it. Now why we have to presume all such things? Well, only after presuming that such things, we can charge A with murder. Second illustration, A is charged under section 326 of IPC which is voluntarily causing grievous hurt by dangerous weapons or means. Now the illustration further says with voluntarily causing grievous hurt to be by means of an instrument for shooting. Now this is for layman that because of shooting A has been charged under section 326 which is grievous hurt. But for a law student, for an advocate, you must know that this is equivalent to a statement that the case was not provided by the section 335 of the said code and that the general exception did not apply to it. 
Now, what is 335? It is voluntary causing grievous hurt on provocation. I hope you're getting more knowledge when we read illustrations. So, always read illustrations. Next, A is accused of murder, cheating, theft, extortion, adultery, or criminal intimation, or using a false property mark. Now, the charge may state that A committed murder or cheating or theft or extortion or adultery or criminal intimation or that he used false property mark without reference to the definitions of those crimes contained in IPC. But the sections under which the offense is punishable must in each instance, in each instance means whatever we have covered, whether it's a murder, cheating, theft, extortion, adultery, criminal intimation, whatever the false property marks must be referred to in the charge. Means the sections which are covering these offenses must be stated. Fourth illustration, D. A is charged under section 184 of the Indian Penal Code with intentionally obstructing a sale of property offered for sale by the lawful authority of a public servant. Now, this is what section 184 of IPC says. So, the charge should be in those words, means these words should be used in the charge. Before I come back with another section, please respect all people, rich or poor, love all kids, yours or others.